in Cook County, we have funding to move this along and com complete the engineering required to determine what the right grade separation will look like and to get the project shovel ready. We're also very excited uh, recently, the Illinois Commerce Commission just recently pledged 24 million to this project. That is almost one quarter of the construction funding projected to be needed for the project. So we are very thankful to, to the ICC for their support. This will give us a great base from which to build as we work together to put together the rest of the funding needed to complete this critical project. So we thank everyone who has helped us get to this point. And I, I, we really do appreciate it. Uh, everybody's focused, everybody's working hard, and, and it's a very cohesive group, and, and I really appreciate that. So the community's input and support tonight is greatly appreciated. And uh, again, I want to thank you all. And with that, I will yield the floor back to Mandy, who will introduce the participants. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, we wanted to go through housekeeping um, before we get into the project team introductions. That way everyone knows if you need um, to submit a chat or have a question or comment during the presentation, we're gonna walk through those instructions. Um, so if we could go to slide five. Um, if you've joined this meeting by Zoom, um, by computer, you can ask questions and provide comments via the chat function. During the presentation, members of the project team will be moderating comments for, for record. So please feel free to comment throughout the presentation. If you've joined this meeting by Zoom via phone, you can ask questions and provide comments during our live breakout sessions later in the presentation. At the bottom of your meeting window, you can click on the button titled chat. When you click on a chat, a window will appear and you can type in your comments and questions and see others' comments and questions. Be sure to send your chat to everyone. A project team member will be recording comments and questions in this chat. The team will do its best to provide timely answers throughout the meeting. And if questions are not answered or addressed during the meeting, we will still note them and provide them in our meeting summary. If you are listening to us through Facebook Live, please note that the comments on the Facebook page will also be monitored for questions and comments throughout the presentation. If you experience any technical issues accessing Zoom chat feature or Facebook Live, please provide your comments and questions via email at info at grandgatewayep.com to be addressed after the meeting, or you can contact us. We'll have our contact information. Um, it's here on the screen, the 630-534-6400, extension 105. As I stated previously, this meeting is being recorded and the recording will be posted to the project website in case anyone has technical difficulties or needs to leave the meeting before it is over. We will also post the presentation slides and, ask, and the questions asked along with our responses to the website following the meeting as well. Now we will go into project introductions. Um, so thank you to the village of Elmwood Park for allowing us to be here. We appreciate that. Um, I would like to introduce our presenters and moderators for this evening. The presenter and moderators um, are members of the Grand Gateway project team. We have from Knight Engineering, Clay Shipley, Scott Breha, and Bill Eldringhoff. From ESI Consultants, we have Joe Shaiziski. I apologize, Joe, I practiced that. Chris Lau um, from ESI Consultants, and then from uh, Metro Strategies, you have myself, Mandy Jennings, and Tammy Worsiak. Also joining us tonight um, as a moderator, um, we have Cecilia Diaz from Cook County Department of Transportation and Highways. I will now turn this over to Scott, who is going to give us, uh, provide us with the Grand Gateway Project Overview. Okay, thank you. Um, you go, okay. Um, yeah, with regard to the project overview, uh, the upcoming slides, uh, we're going to go through the history of the project, uh, the project area, uh, define what a grade separation is, discuss the project benefits and impacts, safety issues, needed improvements, existing conditions, and the project goals, which include safety, mobility, and access. 
So with regard to the, uh, the history of the project, uh, between 1956 and 2005, the Grand Avenue crossing was the scene of 45 crashes that killed seven and injured 27. Uh, as was previously mentioned in 2005, a Metro train struck several vehicles that were backed up at the crossing. At the time of the crash, flashing warning lights were not installed at this crossing location and the crossing length was longer than average. Following this incident, federal safety officials deemed the crossing to be unsafe. A feasibility study was performed in 2007 as a response to safety concerns at the at-grade crossing. IDOT initiated this study determined to determine the feasibility of grade separating Grand Avenue and the railroad tracks. Following the 2005 incident, Elmwood Park performed improvements from 2011 to 2015 to improve crossing safety. These improvements primarily consisted of the installation of flashing warning lights, pavement marking, and signage improvements. In addition, metro train speeds were reduced to a maximum of 30 miles per hour through this area. Now, as the feasibility study was completed 14 years ago, the village of Elmwood Park, in partnership with Cook County, IDOT, Metra, and, and the CP Railroad, initiated a comprehensive phase one preliminary engineering study last year in 2020. As this is a new study, it will not consider the recommendations of the outdated 2007 feasibility study. It will include a current evaluation of all permanent railroad grade separation alternatives. The project will entail stakeholder outreach and public involvement, utilizing IDOT's context sensitive solutions across uh, policies. The phase one work is anticipated to include a combined design report and environmental assessment report. Um, as was mentioned uh, earlier at the beginning of the presentation, the project recently was awarded $25 million, $24 million towards phase three construction. Uh, this funding will help the project move from engineering studies into construction without major delay. Uh, here we have the project area map. Um, West Grand Avenue at the Metro Canadian Pacific Railroad uh, crossing is located approximately 0.6 miles west of Illinois Route 43, which is North Harlem Avenue in the village of Elmwood Park. The tracks cross Grand Avenue at a 10 degree angle, which equates to a rail crossing that is approximately 366 feet wide. Vehicles must cross 179 feet of rail to get to the other side of the crossing. For reference, about a half mile away, the same three tracks at a 70 degree angle over four lanes of traffic at Harlem Avenue have motorists crossing just 35 feet of rail. The approximate study limits extend from 78th Court to 75th Court along West Grand Avenue. Uh, this is a distance of approximately 0.5 miles. In addition, overall limits will expand it as required for traffic management and construction staging drainage and associated routing and connections, and horizontal and vertical roadway alignments, both temporary and permanent. So as some of you may already know, a grade separation is a method of separating two or more surface transportation elements at different elevations, so they will not disrupt the traffic flow of each other at the respective, at the respective crossing intersection. Great separations are implemented to increase safety, reliability, and mobility for vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians. So examples uh, of a great separation. A great separation is a potential alternative being evaluated for further, further consideration. Potential great separation options would include the roadway over the railroad, the roadway under the railroad, a combination of lowering the roadway and raising the railroad, the railroad over the roadway, the railroad under the roadway, and a combination of lowering the railroad and raising the roadway. It is important to note that all, of, all alternatives will be, will be evaluated during the phase one process. Uh, here is a uh, graphic, an example of a roadway overpass. Uh, a grade separation on this project allows for the opportunity to remove potential conflicts between roadway users and trains. Uh, people often get confused. They may go around the gates, get trapped between the gates. This would eliminate that conflict or that, that confusion. Uh, it eliminates all traffic delay related to train activity. It reduces lengthy queues and associated adverse effects on operations and safety at adjacent intersections. It would improve local emergency vehicle response times. 
and improve safety for all modes of transportation. Uh, this is an example of a roadway underpass. Uh, the benefits are the same as the previous slide. Uh, it's just uh, going, uh, the roadway is going under as opposed to over the railroad. Okay, some of the uh, objectives and potential benefits. The project objective is to develop a preferred alternative that accommodates and improves roadway traffic and rail operations, safety, travel efficiency, reliability, and regional mobility. A great separation would improve safety and regional mobility for vehicles, pedestrians, and bicyclists through the Grand Avenue crossing and associated corridor. In addition to improving public safety, this project has several local and regional benefits. The great separation would reduce the vehicular traffic congestion and delays and permit faster emergency response times from both fire and police departments. Along with local benefits, a great separation would eliminate conflicts and delay between vehicles, bicycles, pedestrians, and trains. Reliability would also be increased. Impacts to environmental resources, properties, and land use would also be quantified. In the event that an alternative would cause an existing property's access to be impacted or eliminated, all alternate access options would be identified, evaluated, and quantified. Um, at this point, I'm going to hand it back over to Mandy, and she's going to discuss project outreach. Mandy, we can't hear you at all. Through early, frequent, and effective communication with stakeholders, the resulting project should improve safety and mobility for the traveling public. While seeking to preserve and enhance the scenic, economic, historic, and natural qualities of the setting through which it passes. Our goal through outreach is to provide stakeholders with the information required to effectively participate in the study process and understand the federal environmental screening process, transportation planning guidelines, design guidelines, and the relationship between transportation needs and project alternatives. We will provide the project stakeholders with ways to share our comments or concerns about transportation objectives and project alternatives, as well as improve the ability of the project team to understand and address concerns raised by stakeholders. The purpose is to build community consensus and pr promote involvement through participation throughout the process. In addition to tonight's meeting, there will be one more public information meeting held. This meeting is tentatively scheduled for fall of 2021. There will also be one public hearing that is tentatively scheduled for spring of 2022. This public information will provide a project overview and allow community members the opportunity to submit comments regarding the project. The next public information meeting will be held to present the recommended project alternatives and seek public comments. The public hearing will be held to present the preferred alternative. Public information meetings and hearings will be conducted according to current COVID-19 guidelines and may become virtual rather than in person. The team will work closely with the village and IDOT to monitor any additional outreach needs that may need to be addressed throughout the duration of the project. Materials will be presented to IDOT and FHWA at coordination meetings for feedback and concurrence so that the project can move seamlessly from PEL to phase one and beyond. As you can see, see here, we are currently in the planning and environmental linkages, PEL for short phase which Clay will discuss in greater detail in just a few seconds. It is important to note that public engagement will occur during each phase of this project. Clay will now give a brief overview of the planning and environmental linkages process. Thank you and good evening, appreciate it. Uh, we wanna share a study process known as APEL, which stands for Planning and Environmental Linkages. The Grand Avenue project is currently engaged in APEL study. A PEL study represents a collaborative and uh, integrated approach to transportation decision making that will consider environmental, community, and economic goals, 
early in the transportation planning process and also use the information analysis and products developed during the planning process to inform the environmental, uh, environmental review process. Once sufficient study in the Pell is achieved, the Grand Avenue project will enter a full phase one study. If you have questions regarding the Pell process, I would be happy to address them at the end of the presentation or in breakout session. I'll go ahead and hand it back over to Tammy who will share the draft problem statement. Thanks, Clay. The project team and project stakeholders have identified the transportation problems of the existing Metra Canadian Pacific Railroad crossing at Grand Avenue. The insights provided help the project team to develop the problem statement and draft the project's purpose and need, the first milestone in the study process. We are looking for public comments on the draft problem statement and purpose and need. To provide comments during this meeting, please use the chat feature or the phone during the upcoming breakout session. At the end of the presentation, we will provide alternative contact information for those who would like to comment after the meeting. The information stakeholders provided helped the project team develop a clear transportation problem statement to be solved by the project. Problem statements should identify transportation problems that can be realistically addressed both through design options and available funding. The following are areas of concern that will be addressed during the alternative analysis. Safety was a major concern. Moving commerce and people efficiently was a priority. Access for first responders in the area was key. Addressing the pedestrian and bicycle environment was also noted. Using those priorities, the project team developed the following draft problem statement. Grand Avenue Crossing is located in the village of Elmwood Park, Cook County, Illinois, and is a diagonal roadway that crosses the Metra Canadian Pacific Railroad tracks. The Grand Avenue origin, or, originates in the Central Business District of Chicago and provides access to the west and northwest areas of the city and surrounding suburbs. The Grand Avenue crossing includes the following surrounding land uses, residential, commercial, institutional, open space, and transit. The transportation problems at the Grand Avenue crossing to be solved by the project include traffic congestion, reliability, safety, multimodal transportation, and access. The current at-grade crossing creates a major safety issue for not only vehicles crossing the tracks, but also for pedestrians. First responders traveling to emergencies within the study area. Solutions should include community co connectivity and character, as well as congestion relief for all modes of travel, vehicles, transit, pedestrians, and rail. I will now be handing this over to Scott to discuss the project's purpose and need. Okay, purpose and need. Uh, the problem statement that we just discussed helps contribute to the development of the purpose and need. Purpose and need is presented to stakeholders, state and federal agencies, and the public. The problem statement and purpose and need help the project team verify stakeholders and the community's viewpoints on the nature of the transportation issues associated with the identified problem. The purpose and need statement is documented in a technical report that is presented to IDOT and FHWA. Uh, this statement is a project requ requirement to help provide justification under the federal NEPA policy and process. It is a concise technical statement that provides information regarding transportation needs. It establishes the framework for which alternatives can be developed, measured, and evaluated. And it clarifies, quantifies, and describes impacts that are required based on project needs. 
project need. The current and future demands of vehicular, railway, and pedestrian traffic dictate the need for a review of the railroad crossing to address existing deficiencies. Current peak traffic volumes on Grand Avenue and the surrounding roadway network result in a high level of congestion within this region. The skew angle between the roadway and the railroad crossing is 10 degrees. This results in an unconventionally long crossing. In addition, an above average amount of time is required for vehicles to, to traverse the crossing. This results in an unsafe crossing condition. The above causes vehicles to be potentially trapped in the railroad crossing when trains approach. As mentioned before, subsequent to a severe train vehicle crash that occurred in November 2005, the National Transportation Safety Board's official safety recommendation to the Governor of Illinois and the Illinois, Illinois Commerce Commission was that a grade separation be constructed at the Grand Avenue grade crossing. Project purpose. Uh, the purpose of the project is to alleviate congestion and improve safety and mobility to roadway, including vehicles, pedestrians, and bicyclists, all transportation users at the Grand Avenue and the Metro Canadian Pacific Railroad, Railroad crossing. Okay, so at this point, uh, Chris Lau, I'm gonna turn it over to him. He's gonna just discuss the crash data summary. Thank you, Scott. Crash analysis. Crash analysis along Grand Avenue was performed using crash data and collision diagram provided by IDOT within the study limits during the five year study period from 2014 to 2018. Police report from the appropriate local law enforcement agencies were also referenced to spot check the crash data that you can see here. As you can see from this bar chart, it shows all crash data at the intersections along Grand Avenue from 79th Avenue to the west to 75th Court to the east of the project limits. As you can see, the highest number of crashes occurred at the intersection of Grand Avenue at the railroad crossing which has a number of 36 crashes. Historically, as you have heard before, there have been a total of 45 crashes at Grand Avenue at the railroad crossing between 1956 till November of 2005. And there was a total of five fatalities where, they have, where there were 25 injuries. Of these 45 crashes, 35 crashes involve a train hitting a vehicle, four crashes involve a vehicle hitting a train, and the remaining six crashes involve a pedestrian. Next slide, please. As you can see from this pie chart, it showed the type of crashes happened between 2014 and 2018. 39% of 39 was due to rare collisions followed by 22% of turning vehicle crashes, and then followed by 12% of angle collisions. If you remember, of the 36 crashes which occurred at the intersection of Grand Avenue and the railroad crossing, 25 crashes was of type rare collisions. So um, even though the study period was 2014 and to 2018, but I want to also um, bring up the fact there have been also some fatality as recent as August 22nd, 2020 at this railroad crossing where a pedestrian was hit and killed by a metro train. With that, let me pass it over to uh, Mandy or Tammy for the breakout session. Thank you. I can handle that. Um, Mike is coordinating breakout rooms for us. The moderators tonight will be Scott, Bill, Clay, Chris, Joe, and Cecilia. We will now break out into small groups for roughly 20 to 25 minutes. Each of these groups will be moderated by members of the Grand Gateway Project team. This breakout session will provide an opportunity for all participants to share their thoughts with the project team. 
We kindly ask that each attendee keep their statements to two minutes in an effort to hear from as many attendees as possible. Participants will automatically be moved to breakout rooms. However, should you require ASL or Spanish interpretation, please stay in the main room. If by chance you end up in a room without said accommodations, please notify a member of the project team and we will get you back into the main room. At the end of the allotted time, all participants will be automatically moved back to the main room for a breakout session wrap up, followed by questions and answer. The breakout rooms will also be recorded. For those viewing on Facebook, you will be viewing a live breakout session. The Facebook page will be monitored for questions and comments. As a general ground rule, participants and project team members will demonstrate mutual respect. If any participant does not respect fellow community members or project team members, they will be muted and or removed from the meeting. Inform moderators to make note that if people need further accommodations during breakout sessions, the moderator can move them back to the main room. If you are interacting with this meeting on the interpretation channel, please be sure to reselect the interpretation channel again once breakout sessions are over. All right, let's head to breakout rooms. <laughs> 